It's been three long years since I last played this, huh? I wonder if my opinion has changed. Oh, hey everybody, how you're doing? I hope you're doing great. Welcome to another edition of the Devil May Cry Marathon. The original Devil May Cry was both a financial and critical success. It was praised for its innovative combat system, action and visuals, so Capcom was very well set in making a direct sequel. Despite being the mastermind behind the first game, Hideki Kamiya wasn't involved in the development of Devil May Cry 2. Instead, the game was initially handled to an unknown director. Apparently Capcom wasn't very satisfied with the project, so 4 months, 4 freaking months before the release date, they gave the wheel to Hideaki Itsuno, a long-time Capcom employee. He's been involved in titles like the Street Fighter series, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and Darkstalkers, and those are very well-received games, personally I enjoy them, so at least they put in charge someone who knew what he was doing. Itsuno aimed to expand on everything the first game built up, emphasize more on the action, minimize the puzzle elements and add bigger environments. It's obvious that they had a lot of faith and wanted to deliver a solid product to the consumers, but with only 4 months to spare, were Itsuno and his team capable of saving Devil May Cry 2? That's an answer we will only know by playing the game. So let's jump into Devil May Cry 2 and see if it is a worthy successor. The game opens up in a museum where a mysterious woman named Lucia gets attacked by demons. And then Dante suddenly shows up. They go to retrieve an artifact named the Arcana Magdalia, and then Lucia instructs Dante to follow her to Dumari Island. On the island Dante meets up with Mathieu, who is Lucia's mother and member of the Be the Marley, a clan that fought demons along with Sparta. Mathieu asks Dante for help to fight Arius, an international businessman that turned the island into a demonic wasteland. He plans on using the artifacts known as Arcanas, with the coin at the beginning of the game being one of them, to summon a demon named Margosax, in order to use its power to become an immortal being and take over the world. Dante agrees to help with the flip of a coin, and sets out to defeat evil corporations. When Dante is kept busy, Lucia catches up with Darius, who reveals that she is in fact a demon created by him, but at some point defected and was raised by Mathieu when she was about to be disposed. With a lot on her mind, Lucia gets troubled as she wonders if she will ever lose control of herself and attack the humans. The duo eventually retrieves all the arcana necessary for Arius's ritual, and Lucia once again confronts Arius, but is defeated and captured in the process. But then Dante arrives on the scene and seemingly hands over the arcanas to Arius, rescuing Lucia in the process and they make their escape. With little to no time, Dante sets off once again to defeat Arius. He arrives a little bit too late since Arius is already performing his immortality ritual, but this plan backfires when Dante reveals that he changed the Arcana Magdalia with an old coin he's been flipping the entire game. A false coin for a false god. You know, I always found this entire plot point to be really stupid. We know early on that Arius needs the Arcanas for his ritual, but we never see him doing an attempt to collect them. He just takes a stroll and does his taxes, you collect all the Arcanas for him, until Lucia screws things up, resulting in Dante giving him the Arcanas in exchange for her safety. Which is meaningless because Arius was gonna kill her anyway and Dante saves her with no effort. This entire fetch quest is just an excuse to put Dante in different settings. It pays off with a cool moment, but that doesn't change the fact that this entire plot point is really dumb. So anyway, they have one final duel and Dante emerges victorious. With the day saved, Lucia asks Dante to kill her, as she still fears that she will completely become a demon someday. Before the matter can be solved, it turns out the incomplete ritual was enough to open the portal to the demon world, which Dante now has to close from the inside. Lucia destroys a resurrected Arius one more time, and Dante defeats Argosax, and with no way to go back now, he rides a motorcycle deeper into the underworld. Saddened by the loss of her friend, Lucia is reassured by Mathieu that Dante will be fine, as his father Sparta once came back from a similar adventure. The game ends with Lucia reminiscing about Dante's fate. Hearing the sound of a motorcycle on the outside, she leaves to investigate who it is, ending Devil May Cry 2 in a cloud of mystery. As for my opinions on this adventure, I think this story is worse than the first game. It's extremely vague, as soon as the first cutscene arises I'm already flooding with confusion. What is this place? What's this coin? Is this the first time Lucia and Dante meet? Why is Dante here in the first place? The best way I can explain its quick narrative is that stuff just happens for the sake of happening. There doesn't seem to be a coherent progression in the events of the game and things get stretched out for the sake of having more unnecessary story. What is this place? How did I get here? Why am I doing the stuff I'm doing here? It's dumb, but that doesn't compare to my biggest issue with the story. Remember what I said on my Devil May Cry review? There wasn't that much of a story, but that small amount of story we had was kept interesting because of Dante. 
What the fuck did they do to Dante here? We had a funny and charismatic character in the first game and they demolished that. <laughs> One of the game's main selling points on the back of the cover says, On with Rockstar good looks and more trash talking attitude. You lying fucks. This incarnation of Dante is cold, boring and uninteresting. He dropped the carefree nature to a more disinterested attitude towards his surroundings. And his voice is so plain, I'm very positive not even the voice actor wants to be a part of this. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes. Now we can stop Arius' ambition. Whatever. Why did you ask in the first place? At least one of those selling points is right. If I can say one positive thing, I honestly find this design of Dante to be really cool. This is in fact the design used for his cameo appearance on Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. You know, the one that sparkled this meme. It's such a shame that they did this to him because there are times in which he can show some really cool moments, can still show emotion from time to time, I think he's smiling here. And in some instances there are some small crumbs of that old personality that we all loved before. King? Yeah. Here's your crown. That was so cool. But sadly this Dante is just a ghost of what we had before and a huge disappointment. And Lucia is no better, I cannot tell you much about her personality. She wants to take down Arius and has an internal struggle that is not deeply elaborated on. At least I can say I like her design too. That's something. Thinking about it, she's not too different from Trish, you know, being Dante's partner and having strong ties to the main villain. They are somewhat reusing the same backstory with a few differences in and there, but... Why not just use Trish? You could have used this chance to give her more screen time while developing her relationship with Dante. Oh, by the way, she is in this game, just not involved in the story. This is an action game at the end of the day and the story doesn't need to take priority. In these games, I see the story more as a bonus to get invested in their universe, their characters and their reasoning as to why I'm doing the stuff I'm doing. But here it's not interesting, it's just... bad. But that's enough for that topic. As for the gameplay itself... The combat got revamped quite a lot. The stylish system is still here, thankfully. One of the newest additions is a brand new dodge mechanic. Not that there wasn't anything like that before, but this one covers a wider terrain and can be easily executed with just one button. It even allows you to run through walls. It looks cool, but it gave me more troubles than it solved. One of my favorite additions in this game is changing your handguns at any given time. Thank god no more pause in the game to change them. We also got the introduction of the amulet, a device that you can decorate with different stones that give you different attributes during Devil Trigger. Run faster, the ability to fly, element and attacks, etc. Combos are no longer executed with different time inputs. Now the combat depends on moving your control stick while attacking. It's not a thing you can't get used to, but here's the thing. Dante just doesn't feel as satisfying to play as. If I had to use a word to describe this combat, I would say... Boneless. What used to be a simple but intuitive combat now feels shallow, the new combos just don't feel as satisfying to pull off. They look more fluid, but somehow they just feel more slow, if that makes any sense. Dante has more mobility in mid air now, but that's not saying much, I find his aerial combo so unconventional. Sometimes he's gonna do these kicks in the air that don't seem to connect most of the time, or in other occasions he's gonna do the Helmbreaker. The variety has been reduced to a joke. Dante's only choice of close combat weapons now is swords. You can find different ones, but they all play and feel exactly the same. Remember how in the first game you could unlock new abilities that allow you to approach the combat in different ways? That's not here. You can upgrade your damage input, but from the very get-go you have all your skills available, and with little variety you have in weapons, the combat gets very repetitive very fast. And the exact same problems follow Lucia. Yes, she's also a playable character. She goes through short versions of Dante's levels and the only unique ones she gets are underwater levels that just suck dick. They're slow, clumsy and boring. <laughs> Man, I just don't like playing as Lucia either. She looks more acrobatic than Dante, she has her own moveset, her own weapons, but due to the problems I mentioned previously, she also becomes very repetitive. Add that to the fact that this lock-on system is so bad. And I really mean it. Take a shot every time you're automatically targeting something you don't want to aim at in this game. Let me tell you, you're gonna die of alcohol poisoning. All of these problems just keep accumulating as you progress through the game until you reach the realization that this game suffers from the absolutely worst problem a video game can ever have. Devil May Cry 2 is very, extremely, excruciatingly boring. And it's not just the combat that is boring, we're just scratching the surface here. We lost variety, but what else did we lost? An actual challenge. This game is infamous for being the easiest in the franchise. Devil May Cry 1 wasn't the hardest game ever, but it still punished you for being a reckless idiot. 
Here I'm not kidding, you can get away with just holding the shoot button. Your guns do so much damage in this game, it effectively renders your swords completely useless. And even if you decide to go close quarters, it becomes stale very fast because there just isn't much to it. Chasing the game or attempting to play it the way it was intended to lead to the same road. Dissatisfaction. It's a lose-lose situation. The enemies are idiots, they pose almost no threat but they come in numbers and boy do they love jumping all around the place. You'll spend a lot of time fighting because they respawn so frequently until you realize that they can be easily circumvented by ignoring them. But by the time you realize this, the game throws minor obstacles that you can't overcome unless you defeat all the enemies on screen because I repeat, this lock-on system is fucking awful. You don't want to fight them because they aren't challenging, but when you're forced to do so, it takes what it feels like a long time. And the bosses. <laughs> Oh boy, they've been reduced to a joke. Predictable patterns, no strategy and no real challenge whatsoever. The worst offenders are the ones where the only strategy is to keep the shoot button pressed. And I hope you like doing that because they take forever to die if you don't activate the devil trigger. I'm looking at you infested helicopter. The camera didn't improve since last time, sometimes I feel it even worse. It has problems of not showing all the enemies on screen, messing up my death perception during platforming or keeping me too close to the corners. It's not good at all. As for the game's presentation, I'll start by saying that at least the character models are a great improvement from the past ones. Better facial animation, softer edges, more fluidity in their movements, and I really dig the way they look. One of the team's main focus was to expand the environments, making them 9 times larger than the original game, and they achieved their goal, but... Remember that this stuff is very subjective, but I find these environments lacking at times. I think these areas look stretched out, if that's a way to put it. In the first game you had more condensed areas, which synergized very well with the game's gothic style, and that gave more detail to your surroundings. Here they aren't awful, I want to clarify that. But it has those moments in which they just come off as very dull and bland. In fact, there was this one time during the factory escape mission where I lost so much time on the same area because I couldn't see the door that allowed me to progress. And that's not the only problem brought with expanded environments. These areas are huge and what you get is empty levels that just take too long to traverse. In this game, I constantly find myself trying to feel the devil trigger, not for combat, but to move faster around the place. There's still blue orbs and secret missions scattered around the place, but it feels more like a chore than anything else. In fact, the secret missions are the exact same objective 20 different times. Do you know what the most ironic thing is? Battling feels like it takes forever, traveling through the levels feels like it takes forever, and somehow this game only lasts 3 hours. 3 hours with every single secret mission. Even if you add Lucia's campaign, it barely sums up to 4 and a half hours. Devil May Cry 2 ends up being one of the most disappointing sequels ever made, and as an extremely boring game overall. It's not even the so bad, so good kind of game, no, it's just not worth playing at all. A dumb story on charismatic characters, repetitive combat and an adventure that holds no challenge is the perfect recipe for an awful experience. I came back with a positive attitude, thinking it wasn't as bad as I remembered, but Devil May Cry 2, while functional, was something I forced myself to beat. And if I force myself to beat a game for the sake of having an opinion on it, then fuck it, that game failed miserably. <laughs> That's probably the first time I get too aggressive against a game in this channel, you know? But I think that's the fun part about these marathons, to see how I react to different games within a franchise. And thankfully Devil May Cry 2 is now a thing of the past. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining in. As usual, I hope you had an enjoyable time. And look forward for the next episode, because we're gonna be looking at Devil May Cry 3. And no oh, man, do I have a lot to say about this one. Until then, you guys better stay safe. I'll see you next time.